Good evening, church. Welcome to Holy Spirit Radio. Welcome to Holy Spirit Radio. I pray that your faith have failed you not. And I pray that your eyes been fixed on Jesus. And I pray that you know he's the great king. And he's faithful to finish what he started. We must get an understanding and a revelation of his glory, his authority, and all that he is. All that he are, and who he is to come. For our Lord is greater than anything in this life, and must be exalted more than anything in this life, because everything in this life is below his presence. In church, as we consider that, let us remember it's time for us to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting for the end time to get here. Because the end is now. Yes, beloved. We're not waiting on the end time to get here. Because the end is now. Well, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, it's good to gather with you again. I pray all is well, uh, family. I pray all is well. And um, I pray that you're seeking the face of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. I pray um, that his concern, his desires is, is increasing in every way in your heart. That his will be done. And not ours, okay. And I pray um, um, that His presence have been a covering and a protection over your family. I pray for for even more protection because we live in such a dark world. But church, let us find confidence in His glory because no darkness can overtake the light that is in Him. Therefore, church, as that light dwell in us, we will be victorious over darkness as He. Is victorious darkness because he live in the, as he is victorious over darkness because he live in us. So, church, I just pray um, for your families. I pray um, by all means that faith have been giving you comfort, Jesus, that your faith has been a transforming power for his righteousness, but also that same faith have been giving you comfort in that he's coming back to get us and bring us where he are. Okay, church, I just pray. Um, um, that faithfulness have been increasing, obedience have been increasing. Um, and through that obedience, the mercy of God have been even more revealed in his life, giving you an understanding of how much he loves us. Okay. Uh, church, I got a word for you today. It's a heavy word, um, but it's needed. You know, we need, we need um, a heavy word. We need um, to work the most, a heavy word to work the muscles of our heart that uh, we, the right the righteousness of God will be produced in us that we might finish this race strong and solid uh, according to his good will and his good purpose but church before we get into the word um, let's reverence the Lord in prayer and um, allow our heart to be massaged by his presence presence and um, be in a place that it needs to be in to receive um all that he had to give because there's no one can put our heart in a place where it needs to be like the Holy Spirit. So let's let's seek the Holy Spirit. Let's welcome him and um, allow him to do what he do best, <laughs> transform us. Church, let's pray. Father, 
O heavenly and wise Father. Father, bless your holy name, Lord. We sincerely repent of our sins. Please forgive us of our sin. Draw to us, Daddy. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We need your presence. We need your heart. We need your righteousness. We need your glory more than we ever had before, Lord. Lord, we're in the darkest hour this world have ever seen. And some of us are even in a dark place in our heart, Lord. And we need light to be shined on it, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that your love and your truth would uh, uproot any bitterness, Lord. We pray that your truth will uproot any unforgiveness, Lord. We pray that your truth will uproot everything that is not attached to you, Lord. Because through your presence, we find self-control. Through your presence, we find kindness. Through your presence, we find meekness. Through your presence, we find goodness. Through your presence, we find perseverance, Lord. Your presence, we find hope. In your presence, we find everything that we need to survive according to truth and live according to life. Lord, we pray that we will reverence your holy name. pray that a fire will burn in us because repentance burn in our hearts Lord sanctify us by your truth Lord because your word is the only way it can be done Lord and that word is our Lord Jesus so let the Lord Jesus please be um, massaged Lord be groomed be saturated in our hearts Lord that we will experience you at a level that we never have before Lord and Lord we pray that we would not be people be people pleasers Lord but we pray Lord that we would live to please your heart and as we live to please your heart, Lord, your children are set free. The kingdom is built up. Most importantly, you are glorified. And as you are glorified, you are pleased with our service and respect and reverence of all you've done to your son, Jesus. respect for your holy name Lord Father we pray that we will honor you more we pray that we will not misrepresent your son we pray that we will turn from every way that, that grieve your spirit we pray that we will turn from every way that have made people way Lord we pray that we will turn from every way that would cause you to be best to send a wrong message Lord that did not come from you Lord Lord we pray that we will take serious the way we live and we pray Lord that we will find comfort in your word comfort in your presence in your righteousness we pray that your righteousness would be a pillow for our head your presence will be a mattress for our body and your heart Lord will be the air we breathe that we may live to your power live your glory. May you 
you be glorified in all things, Lord God. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Jesus precious the holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, brothers and sisters, well, brothers and sisters, um, let's get up into this word, church. Let's get up into this word. Um, brothers and sisters, as we um, look at the times and the seasons, the environment, everything that has happened around us, the spiritual condition of this world. Uh, the spiritual persecution of those that love the cross. And the physical persecution of those that um, love the cross. As we consider all that is happening and all that is moving. We must understand that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is closer than he ever have been, even than when we first believed And as we get a revelation that he's closer than when he first believed, then we got to also understand that the Lord have drawn a line in the sand. Man. And we all and we all know that once a line has been drawn in the sand. That mean. That is two sides. And there's two sides to a line. So as we know that the Lord have drawn a sign, a line, uh, excuse me, a sign, I mean, excuse me, drawn a line in the sand, then we must understand that you can either be on one side or the other. And our Lord Jesus stated on many occasions, you either with me or against me, you either gather with me. Or you scatter, but there is no in between because I'm not in between because I'm completely on the side of my father, says the Lord Jesus. And if you're gonna walk with me, if you're gonna um um if you're gonna walk with me, and if you're gonna live by me, then you have to choose who you're gonna serve. Because you can't serve two masters. So as we consider this statement by our great king, our Lord, our master, as we consider his statement and the power and his authority in these words. Then we must understand. That there's writing. His writing is on the wall for mankind. Because our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is closer than he ever have been, even than when we first believe our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is a few years away. And as we consider everything that he's doing around us, then we got to understand that the writing is on the wall. The writing is on the wall. And as we consider how to consider what he's doing around us, meaning how he's keeping us from this darkness, and as we consider what this world is off the way in doing everything that he said would happen when they get close to his return then we must consider 
that the writer's on the wall. And as we go through the book of Daniel, uh, as we go through the book of Daniel, it talks about uh, the empires and, and different uh, um, the different empire that was before the cross, but also the empires that would be here when it get close to his return. And church, the last empire is already here. According to scripture, the last empire is already here. Which shows that the return of the Lord is extremely, is extremely near. And as we consider that, that consider all these things that are happening. Then again, church, I appeal to you, brothers, that we must understand that the writing is on the wall. Now, let, what does this statement, the writing on the wall, come from? Well, it come from the book of Daniel in a story that was written. Let me go in deeper. Let me rephrase that. It come from the power of the Holy Scriptures, this statement, the writing on the wall, over 2,500 years ago. In the book of Daniel, um, there was this king um, called Be uh, Belshazzar. Um, he was the... Uh, he was the child from the lineage of King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar uh, was his uh, grandfather. Okay. So King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, he took over his uh, uh, his, his 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 grandfather kingdom. So at this time, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, before he passed, he ruled the whole world. Okay. So then his grandson stepped up and he rules the whole world. Okay. He rules the whole world. Okay. Now, when King Nebuchadnezzar had took over Jerusalem, he had took over Jerusalem. Um, he had all the vessels, the gold and silvers that was, that was in the temple of God. But King Nebuchadnezzar, his grand, his grandfather knew that God didn't play. He knew God had humbled him, put him in the put him in the field. To uh, he lost his country. And he was out in the field for seven years like an animal because he had lifted up his heart in pride towards God. Church, let us not lift our heart up in pride towards God, but rather humble our heart in humility towards God, that we might receive grace and mercy um, in that great day of the Lord, and also daily. Okay, so he never comes a guy reverence for God after he seen that God was nothing to play with. Okay, that after he seen God was holy, that he gets all the honor and glory. So God humbled his heart, but his grandson never learned from his grandfather mistakes. Oh, man. Now, so it's one night now. Belshazzar having a party. And I believe that it was a grandfather. Um, I believe it was his grandfather. I can't remember exactly was his father or grandfather, but I believe that it was a grand his grandfather church. Now, here's here's the thing though. Belshazzar is having a party. He's having a party um that night. He's having a party that night. Okay. He's having a party that night. And he he feeling himself. He feeling himself. Now, do the note. He should have learned from what his grandfather did. He should have learned. He should have learned. He should have learned. But he didn't. So he said, hey, um, him and his party, go get. Go get the uh, vessels from the uh, from the Hebrews. Go get the vessels, the golden silver vessels. And we're going to come and drink out of them. Oh. So he go, he sent for the gold and silver vessels and bring them out to the party and they go to drinking out of God drinking out of God cups. They they go to drinking out of uh out the God God Almighty cups from his holy temple. Oh man. And not only did they drink out of his cups, but they started uh uh Given uh given honor, they started um varying gods, other gods, 
outside of the one and true God who they belong to. Oh, man. Oh, man, that's tough there, man. What do we compare that to? So this is what they did. They bought like somebody else buying somebody else's house. Let me give you an example. They bought like somebody else coming over to somebody else's house, seeing their home, and giving somebody else the credit as if they home and they never and they never bought it. Oh man, God. Boy, and this angered the Lord. This angered the Lord, man. That you would take my vessels, drink out of them, and then give uh honor or uh, uh, an invariance to other f false gods. Oh man. Church, let us not act in such a manner in pride that God have given us all things through the testimony of Christ Jesus. And that we would misrepresent his glory by conforming to, by conforming to this world. By conforming to this world. Saying things. And teaching things that does not come from God. Let us not act in such a manner that we would dishonor God. That we would dishonor God. Because this is a very serious account right here. Because this man, he angered God. Now He angered God. Let's follow it. Now, after he did that, a man hand, oh man, a man hand started to write on the wall. Oh man, the man hand started to write on the wall, and it began to write a message in the plaster of the wall. Oh man, everything in the party stopped. Everybody froze. It said the king that called for the nels, the call for the vessels. Man, but God know how to. But I'm telling you, but the Lord will humble you, but I'm telling you. Now, he was prideful at first, drinking out of cups, giving very variance to other gods. Man. A finger came in the room, a man hand appeared in the room and started writing on the plaster of the wall. It said the king knees started knocking together. Oh, man. God. It said his knees started knocking together. So you got the ruler of the world who... Rule, rule over the entire world at the time. Knees knocking together because a hand started writing in the plaster of the wall. Oh, man. Boy. And then he sent for Daniel, who had the Holy Spirit in him, the excellent spirit in him, to discern what the writing on the wall meant. And he told him, God told him that very moment, your kingdom have been taken from you. Oh. Man, that you have been weighed in the balance and find wanted. Man, church, let us get a revelation of how holy God is that he must be respected. Because it says that he had been weighed in the balance. Oh, man. That his kingdom was taken away from him. Why? Because his heart was lifted up in pride. And because his heart was lifted up in pride. He stood against the Lord. Whenever a man walk in pride, he stand against, he stand against the Lord because the, uh, the Lord opposes a pride heart. This man angered the Lord and the Lord wrote, a, wrote in the plaster of the wall. Think about it now. Think about us being uh, in a party. Be, think, think about it. Let me say this. Think about it if we was in a party. And somebody go to and, and, and a hand go to writing on the plaster of the wall because something was dead that was not right. Oh, man. I'm telling you, everybody going to run. Everybody going to run out the building. Let let's everybody be in the building and a hand appear out of nowhere and go to writing in the wall. Everybody going to clear the whole house out. Scared, scared like I don't know what. Well, church, the writing is on the wall. And it's time for us to turn from idols. It's time for us to turn from rebellion. It's time for us to turn from all unrighteousness because the writing is on the wall. You know what? 
People are being weighed in the balance. How are they being weighed? They're being weighed by the righteousness of Christ Jesus. The righteousness of Christ Jesus is weighing people in the balance. How do we know that? Because scripture tells us that God weighs a man according to his heart. And when God seen that man's heart, how in his heart he disrespected the Lord by taking his holy vessel that came out of his temple, Jesus. It's dishon and dishonored him by offering it to idols. God judge him. Let us not take our temple. The, our body is the holy, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let us not dishonor this temple by walking unrighteously, by conforming to this world. Because if not, we're going to be weighed in the balance. What balance? The standard. We're going to be weighed by the standard and the righteousness of God. And if we're not found humble by bearing the gospel, then the kingdom will be taken away. How will it be taken away? Because we gave it away by disobedience and conforming to this world. Man. The Lord Jesus said, no one can take your crown away from you, but don't let nobody cause you to put your crown down. Church, we will put our crown, our crown down, which is eternal life, by conforming to this world. Church, this is very serious account because the writing is on the wall. The writing, the writing is on the plaster of the wall. As we look at everything that is going around on around us in society, the Lord is writing in the wall. He sees the pride of this world. He sees the uh, the rebellion of this world. He sees how people are worshiping idols in this world. Because remember, church, I shared with you, the Lord showed me a vision of him breaking the firmament and his big hand came through. He cracked that firmament and smited everybody that was worshiping idols. So he's seeing everything that's going on. He's sitting upon a, the circle of the earth and watching everything that man do because don't nothing miss his sight. And as he's looking at everything, the Lord is writing on the plaster of the wall. Man. You know what? He's writing a line in the sand that whoever don't obey the gospel is whoever don't obey the gospel is weighed in the balance. You know what weighed in the balance? Whoever don't obey the gospel, they will receive my wrath. Excuse me. Let me make sure I said that correctly. Whoever disobey the gospel, whoever disobey the gospel is weighed in the balance according to, according to, their righteousness because they did not receive the righteousness of Christ Jesus. That's very important. That's why it's, it's, it's paramount that we obey the gospel because when we obey the gospel, the righteousness of Christ Jesus transform us. And when we stand before the Lord, his righteousness is all the Lord see. And because we are in his righteousness, our name is written in the Lamb book of life. But if we have not obeyed the gospel, That stones that the people rejected will crush them. Why? Christ Jesus is this stone. And Christ Jesus is a holy God. Though he love us greatly, Christ Jesus love us greatly. But we must understand in that love is judgment. Okay. So church. This world will be judged by the standard of God. This world will be weighed in the balance. But the only way to be found successful and faithful when we are held against that standard is if we have already been baptized in the spirit of God. We have been cleansed by the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Because when you're cleansed by his righteousness, you meet the standard of God. And as a result, the standard that you is weighed by don't condemn you because you have been saved. Jesus, man. So as we consider that the writing is on the wall, what do we say, church? We say that the obedience to the gospel is the most important thing in our life. And as we consider the writing on the wall, that we must understand we need to be sheltered by his presence. As we consider the writing on the wall, 
then we must consider we need to be sheltered by his presence. In the book of Revelation, it talks about how in the new heaven and the new earth and how we will be with the Lord, how we will be sheltered by his presence, that he will feed us, he will take care of us, that there will be uh, no more scorching heat, but his presence will shelter us. We're church right now. We need his presence to shelter us as well. And his presence shelter us by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the absolute power and presence of God that transform us by the righteousness of Christ Jesus that shelter us in his presence. Because, see, men will be weighed in the balance. You know what? We will all give an account for what we have done. We will all be weighed by the standard of God. And we want to meet the standard of God by obeying the gospel. And as we obey the gospel, his presence shelter us. And as his presence shelter us, it shelter us like a house. Whenever a storm comes, a man run into a house so the storm won't wet him or cause him to die okay well church there's a storm coming and there's many storms we will face daily because we are in a dark hour and there's spiritual warfare there's things that war against our soul because it don't want to, it don't want us to enter the kingdom of heaven okay the bible said we have an adversary which is the enemy that war against our soul every day because he don't want us to see heaven and in that understanding, it expounds the, shelter, the presence of God much more that we need his presence to shelter us from this storm. We need his presence to shelter us from our own desires. We need his presence to shelter us because his, his presence is like a house. And as his presence shelter us and cover us, that presence cover us. From all unrighteousness. It washes us. Cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And that righteousness. His presence is a shield. That protects us. From every dark. And every deceitful way. And that presence. Comes through the shield of faith. His. Our faith in him. Increase. His presence in us through the power of the Holy Spirit that shelter us like a house from deception, from unrighteousness. And in that way, the standard of God drive us to obedience through the grace that he have given us through his sacrifice. Church, this is very important. We need to be sheltered by his presence. And we know Jesus won't force himself on nobody. So therefore, let us yield to the Holy Spirit and welcome his presence. That we might be heirs of salvation and finish the race that he has set before us. Okay. Revelation 4. Revelation 4. Verse 1 through 2. Revelation. Revelation. 4. One, two, two. Let's read that real quick. It says that after I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up here. And I will show you the thing which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat upon the throne. Church, I appeal to you, brothers and sister the same way it was stated right here in the book of revelation when he called our brother john up in his spirit to show him the things hereafter like so church the lord called me in the spirit and i seen the lord jesus sitting on the throne in heaven and the lord had been speaking about everything that's going to take place in the next few years that's what's going to happen hereafter and i'm telling you church Rephrase that. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. The Lord is telling us that a line is drawn in the sand. The writing is on the wall. And the door is open in heaven for all of those who will believe his testimony. But rest assured that door will be closed when he returned. And it will be too late because they did not receive the Lord when he had a, when he had a chance. 
Church, I remember waking up in the vision and there was this big rope, big rope let down from heaven. And there was a man that there, there was a big rope let down from heaven. Everybody in this world were building their empire, building their empire, building their monuments. And then when destruction hit, everything was level. These empire was not here no more. The same rope that was hanging down um, from the sky. A man was hanging on that rope, banging, banging on the sky, banging on the sky, saying, let me in, let me in, let me in. The sky did not answer. That rope swung around the whole time. That rope swung around the whole time. The whole time. Let's break down this vision. The Lord was saying that everybody that was building monuments for themselves, focus on the empire world, they pay attention to that rope that were hanging down the whole time because they were so focused on what they were doing. But time came, judgment came when everything was level, when everything was wiped out. Then they paid attention to the rope that were hanging down right beside them the whole time. That rope represented the hand of God that was in the earth the whole time. But when it was pulled up, it was too late. When it, when it, when it, when it, when the gates closed, it was too late. OK. The man was banging on the sky saying, please let me in, please let me in. But it was too late. What was the Lord saying? The Lord said, everybody that disobeyed the gospel by conforming to this world would be just like that man that was hanging from his rope, begging to get into my kingdom, but will not get into my kingdom because they didn't re they didn't grab a hold to my hand when they had a chance. Church, the Lord have been the, the Lord. I was taken in the spirit and I say this in all humility. I was taken in the spirit. And I seen the Lord Jesus sitting on the throne in heaven with his golden session. Our brother John said. Right here, and after I be and after I look, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and first a voice which heard, first, uh, and first voice which I heard was as it was a trumpet. This is very true because the Lord Jesus spoke to me in a similar type of way, and his voice sounded as a trumpet. And he told John, Come here, and I will show you the things with, which will happen hereafter. And immediately I was taken in the spirit, and behold, a throne was in heaven. And one sat upon the throne. Church. I seen exactly that. The Lord Jesus sitting on the throne in heaven. Church, this is very important. Because as we consider that our as we consider our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus was sitting on the throne in heaven, we must understand that our Lord Jesus is the King of Heaven, King of Heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. That his glory should not be taken lightly, but his glory. Should be reverenced because his glory is the power over all things because God is mighty and blessed be his name forever. Amen. So let's go to Revelation 3 19. 3 19. It says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Oh, man. Now, church, we are very zealous to do the work of the Lord, which is good. We are very zealous, a lot of zeal to get out and preach the word, to feed the homeless, to do the will of the Lord. We are very zealous at doing that, which is great. But there's something else we should be zealous at doing, especially when we have been in a place of rebel, a rebellion and disobedience. Look what Jesus said in right, Revelation 3, 19. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. So he will rebuke us. He will chasten us. He rebuking us today. He chastising us today. Why? Because he love us. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Why? Because we are his children. What loving parent don't rebuke and, 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 and correct his children? I don't know a parent that don't, that say they love their child. But don't rebuke them and chasten them. Meaning, don't rebuke them or correct them. I have children and I will rebuke them and I will correct them because I love them. Well, like so for the church, that that our father in heaven, through his name, Christ Jesus, and through his son and his testimony, he chastises us. He rebukes us. Why? Because he loves us and he wants us to finish the race and come home with him. Okay. And as he said that, he said, be zealous, therefore, and repent. So not only we must be zealous to do his work, but we also must be zealous to repent, Jesus. Not only do we be zealous to do 
outreach and do stuff outwardly. But we also must be zealous to live a life of repentance according to his will to expound his glory because he's worthy of praise. So repentance is a honor. Repentance is a privilege because God don't have to allow us to repent. It's by his grace and his mercy. He allows us to repent. So he said, look, be zealous to live a life of repentance. Why? Because when you live a life of repentance, you live a life of humility. Repentance should not be a burden, but it should be a pleasure because it allow us to consistently have access to his presence because we understand that it's by grace that we receive anything that we receive. Man. Therefore, we need to have zeal to repent. Lord, baby, look, Lord, I repent. I'm sorry. I need you. Please stay close to me. Please stay close to me. That's the attitude he like to see. If he when he see us fall and we repent and we turn from his all blessed are you, child, because you humbled yourself before me. You know I love you. You know I'm holy and you respect me for I'm him. Get up, baby. Get up. You good. I love you because you humbled yourself and you were not prideful before me. When the Lord see humility, he smile. He like, you know what, man, you know what? I turn back any, I turn back any wrath. Why? Because Lord said, you obey me, this will happen. If you disobey me, that will happen. Well, when you repent, you obey him. So God has spoken by his word. Whoever repents, then you know what? I will turn. Whoever repent, I will turn that which is evil. That I will turn. The, excuse me, rephrase that. The Lord said, when you repent, when you repent, then I will turn my wrath from you. God wrath is holy. So when he said, hey, I will repent. When, when you repent, then I will turn my wrath from you. So when we humble ourselves and repent, because God tempts no man with evil. So let me rephrase that. God, God, God tempt no man with evil, but every man is led astray by the lust of his own heart. And when a man humble himself and repent and turn from that lust, the wrath of God is turned from him because he have come back to a place of obedience. And God said, if you obey me, this will happen. So therefore, when we live a life of repentance, we live a life of obedience through the grace that we have received because we have reverenced his holy name. So let's church, let's be zealous to repent. Because the Lord is faithful. So let me make sure I said that clearly, church, the Lord tempts no man with evil. He tempts no man with evil. So excuse me, I want to make sure I said that exactly the right way that the Lord tempts no man with evil. And he will turn away his wrath from those that repent and humble himself and humble themselves before him. Okay. Revel I'm Revelation 3 verse 20, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and will sup with him and he with me. Mm, mm, mm. Church, the Lord is standing at the door of our heart every day. And also those who don't believe the Lord is standing at the door every day. And church, he wants us to come. At, he wants to dwell in our hearts. So church, we have opened up the door for him. But do we allow him to dwell in our hearts? Church, we have opened up the door for him. But do you keep him at the front door or you let him in your heart? Because see, I can open a door from somebody. I can open the door for somebody and still make them wait at the front door. So have you opened your heart up and allow Jesus to come into your living room, to come in your bedroom, to walk through your house? Because your heart is a house. So have you opened up the door and allowed for him to walk in and dwell in your house? Or have you been keeping him at the front door because you don't want him to see what is really there? And it's not that he don't know. He's just waiting on you to give it to him. Why? Because he's a gentleman. He will never force himself on no one. Church, let us walk in obedience with the Lord, because as we walk in obedience through the grace that he has received, we know that grace, according to faith, we have been saved. And by that grace and faith that we have been saved by, it leads to obedience. And that obedience causes the Lord to dwell in our heart, because in obedience, we welcome him to say, hey, we want you. We need you because you are our hope. When we obey the Lord, he feel our love. And as he feel our love, he dwells in our heart because we choose him. Jesus. Because see, the Lord have chose us when he hit the cross. He chose us first. It's our turn 
to choose him. Why? Because he gave us a choice of free will. The blueprint has been laid out. He sacrificed himself on the cross. He's given us his spirit. It's our choice to choose to obey his spirit that testify that we truly believe, we truly believe, and we live by his name. Okay? Moving along. What shall we say then, church? Church, the Lord spoke everything into existence. How much more will he speak judgment from the words of his mouth? Will those will they excuse me? Church, what shall we say? Church, the Lord spoke everything in existence from the words of his mouth. How much more will he speak judgment from the words of his mouth? Will people perish? Because they disobeyed the gospel. Not that he hoped for any perish because the Lord don't want no one to perish. The Lord want no one to perish because he hoped that all would come to a knowledge of Christ Jesus. The father want nobody to perish. He want all to be into the kingdom of heaven. That's his heart. That's his heart. But if we disobey the gospel, we will, we will perish because we chose not to believe. So let us believe, let us walk in a belief church by obeying the gospel through the grace that we have received. That we might pull many out of fire as we can because they see us, they see the faith in us that reveals the glory of God that is in Christ Jesus. So church, the Lord spoke everything in existence. How much more when he speaks judgment will those words come to pass as well? Church, this is a true statement. Because all who don't obey the gospel shall perish because they did not believe in God, one and only Son. And that Son is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Revelation 117. Revelation 117. Revelation 117. John said, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, fear not. I am the first and the last. Oh, man. Now look at the holiness of God. Look at the holiness of God, our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. That John said when he seen him, he fell as dead. Oh, man. Church, this is very true. When you encounter the presence of God like that, you'll fall at his feet as dead because, man, he's so glory, man. Oh, man. And I can testify to this in truth and spirit that when the Lord smited people in that vision, the man of God fell at his feet as dead. Oh, man. And the Lord said, get up, child. You are righteous, man. This should show because as you read the scripture, when men encountered the presence of God, they fell on their face as dead and the Holy Spirit went into him and to pick him back up because the, the, the glory of God is so holy. Why do we bring this scripture up right here? Because it reveal the glory, the power and authority of God that when you encounter his presence, man, everything drops, fall, reverence his name completely. Church, let as we live our life, that we will fall on our face before him by living righteously according to his will. Let every day we live be like we on our knees before his feet. And he strengthened us every day by his spirit. Jesus, man. Church, let us reverence the Lord like this, because I'm going to tell you something. If you don't fall on your knees by living righteously, you will fall on your knees when he judge. Oh. This is a very serious account because Jesus loved us greatly. Man can barely understand or explain how much God loved man because man would never fully comprehend the love God got for us, man. God got a great love for us, man. I just want to confirm and affirm that for you, church, that Lord, our God, he said there's no greater love than laying down his life for his sin. God became a man. Oh, man. I don't think we know how big that is. God became a man, literally became a fleshly man so he can die for us and give himself away so we can be saved. Man, there's no greater love than that.
There's no greater love. Can no love in life ever measure a holy, pure, sinless God becoming the flesh of a man so he can save his people? What shall we say then, church? He's worthy of praise. He's deserving of glory, power, riches, and blessings forever. Because he's God. And he's true. What shall we say then, church? Church, we must turn from our iniquities to see the truth that the Lord is revealing to us. For, for if we don't turn, then our heart is lifted up in pride. And when a heart is lifted up in pride, it cannot see. Therefore, let us humble ourselves before the Lord and receive the truth and receive the truth and receive a true revelation of his glory. According to faith that we have received and according to truth and not compromise because there's no compromise in the truth of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus because he is absolute, absolutely, absolutely truth and there's no false in him. And there's no false in him at all. Blessed be his name forever. Church, let's pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus, Father, we repent of our sins. Please forgive us, Lord. Lord, we just want to say thank you for this word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your life. Thank you for your revelation. Thank you for your consistency with us. Thank you for never giving up on us. And thank you for loving us above all things. Uh, we thank you for your big heart towards us, Lord. And we pray that you continue to strengthen us by your grace. We pray that you continue to strengthen us by your presence. And we pray that you continue to lead us by your spirit that we might be heirs of salvation, Lord God. Lord God, we love you so, so much. We love you so, so much, Lord God. And we pray that you continue to guide us, move in us, and lead us by your Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord God, we thank you for all that you do and all that you bring and all that you pour out, Lord God. And if you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Lord, thank you for leading me to this place. Fill me up with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I believe that you sent your one and only son. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Fill me up with your spirit and teach me to walk in your ways. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my risen Savior. Thank you for your grace. And I thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 If you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you could ever do in your life. If you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you could ever do in your life. Now go and get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. He's coming soon. And you did the best thing you could ever do in your life. If something happened to you tomorrow, you are saved from destruction. If something happened for you tomorrow, if something happened to you tomorrow, you're saved from destruction. Okay? Now allow the Holy Spirit and pray um, in the name of the Lord Jesus that the Holy Spirit will guide you to a true Bible teaching church that really love the Holy Spirit because those that are led by the children of God are the spirit are those that are led by the church the spirit of God excuse me those that are led by the spirit of God are the children of God and those that are led by the spirit love Jesus with all their heart so whether it's a building or a house because the church is not bound by a physical location because the church is a people and whether we gather the church is happening so whether it's in the house or a building pray that the Lord leads you to people who are led by the uh, spirit who teaches the truth because there's many false doctrines. There are many false prophets out here that are leading people astray from the will of God. And the Lord want to spare you for that. So pray that the Holy Spirit will lead you 
to the truth and welcome to the kingdom of God. Congratulations. And remember that Jesus loves you so much. Church, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus loves us very much. He loves us very much. And I'm, he's coming soon. Let's find confidence in his faithfulness, his truth, and his power. Let's find comfort in his love that he will never leave nor forsake us. It's church. Let us just not forsake him. He's always there. It is that leave him. Church, let us not leave him. But remain by his side. By obeying his voice. And living for his will. And testify of his holy name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. And we believe. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 Father, we greet you with a holy kiss. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Father, we love you. You are the one and only true God. Blessed be your holy name forever. Amen. Church, remember that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus love us so, so much. See you next time, beloved. Church, I pray that this word was a blessing to you. I pray that it guide your heart. I pray that it guide your mind. I pray that it guide your spirit and provoke you to righteousness. I pray that this message increase the holiness of God, increase the righteousness of God, because it revealed it to you by His Spirit. And I pray that it awaken you that our Lord love us, but He is extremely holy. And that holy has to be met with a standard. And that standard is Christ Jesus, our Lord, and His righteousness. And His sacrifice on the cross. And church, let us remember that it's time for us to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting for the end time to be here. Because the end is now. Church, we're not waiting for the end time.